Hey guys, how are you? Now we will discuss the MCQs as well as the concepts regarding basics of control system in a fast track manner. So what is that we are going to discuss? We are going to discuss the basics of control systems. So in basics of control systems, one important thing that you have to remember is about the feedback. Why? Because basically a system without any control is called as an open loop system that you know. For example, if a system is denoted like this, if this is the system and there is the input and there is the output. You are giving input, you are getting some output. It is an open loop system. Okay. Suppose if you want to control or improve the output quality or the quality of the output, then what we have to do, we should add a control system. So how do you convert a control system or add a control system to an existing open loop system? By providing of a feedback to the input. If you take the output and give back to the input, so in the input there will be some summer or some kind of a device which will be constantly observing the input as well as the feedback. Feedback is nothing but from the output. So if there is any error, then this control system will be operating in this way. So that is basically open loop and closed loop system that you know. Okay. So when you are adding a feedback to an open loop system to make it a closed loop system or a control system, the feedback may be of two types. That is feedback may be negative feedback or positive feedback. Negative feedback is such a feedback if output is deviating from the input. The output deviation may be going up or going down. So the action from the input will be reverse. Suppose if the output is going up, let us say you are going on a bike, your speed is suddenly increasing. Why? Because you are going down a slope. What do you have to do? Decrease the speed. That means you are applying brake at the input. Understood? So that is called as a negative feedback. That means corrective action. Basically negative feedback implies corrective action. But if you are aiding the wrongly going process, then that is called as positive feedback and positive feedback system represents an un unstable. Okay, for positive feedback creates the system into unstable system. Let us say you are going down a slope. Instead of braking, you started raising more. That means it is an unstable condition, isn't it? So that is called as positive feedback and negative feedback. So we have to understand more advantages of or uh, uh, the characteristics of a negative feedback system. Due to negative feedback system, one thing what happens is the gain of the system will decreases by how much factor? Let us say K is the gain in open loop system. In the open loop system, if K is the gain, then in closed loop system, the gain will be given by K by 1 by GH. Where G is the forward path or the open loop transfer function and H is the feedback loop gain of the feedback loop so 1 plus gh if uh, gh if you make this gh value equal to minus 1 if you make gh value is equal to minus 1 now what will happen to the gain of the system if gs becomes equal to minus 1 this denominator will become 0 and gain will go infinite that means the system will be driven into instability so by carefully choosing the value of the feedback parameter which are adding in the transfer function you can decide the stability of the system also so if you are making the gh value equal to 0 if you are making the gh value is equal to 0 then what would be the gain of the closed loop system same as the open loop system suppose if you are making gh is equal to 0 then your closed loop system and open loop system both are the same there is no difference okay so we are going to vary the gain of the system by varying what the feedback so by the nature of feedback only you can achieve all these characteristics another thing that we are going to have an advantage in case of a negative feedback system is that the system time constant will decrease. That means system time constant is decreasing means it is taking only less time to operate. That means what does it indicate? The speed of the system has been increased. If the speed of the system has increased means what I can say the bandwidth of the system is also increased. So due to negative feedback the bandwidth of the system will increase. By how much bandwidth is increased? Bandwidth of closed loop system is equal to 1 plus gh times of bandwidth of open loop system that means 1 plus gh times you have increased the bandwidth of the system bandwidth you are increasing means it can take wide range of frequencies as input and give output but also whenever the bandwidth of a particular system will increase there is one associated disadvantage what is the disadvantage means because due to the bandwidth the frequencies that can be accepted as an input for this particular block is increasing at higher frequencies noise will be because Noise is a signal which is characterized generally by high frequency. So if the bandwidth of the system increases, then the, you know, the sensitivity to noise also will increase. So the noise uh, problem also will increase. So that is one other advantage of disadvantage of having higher bandwidth of any system. Another important factor that we have to see is the parameter sensitivity will decrease. Why? Because 
within the transfer function as i told you within this control within this system system is a combination of number of elements if one of the element in this system does not work well the output may get effect in case of an open loop system but when you are closing loop closing the loop even if there is any variation in the parameter variation inside the block itself even if the output is varying immediately corrective action is going to take place that is that means the sensitivity has been decreased to the parameter changes isn't it that means even if the parameter changes parameter variation takes place inside the original system the system will not respond to that okay so that is another advantage of having a negative feedback system or basically using feedback systems so let us simply look at some of the mcqs that were asked earlier with regard to this topic so first question that you are seeing on the screen is for the system to be stable in a negative feedback systems with the increase of negative feedback loops the range of gain gain k so by using negative feedback system what happens to the gain of the system the gain of the system will decreases so option a reduces will be right answer for this question next question you see a system can be completely described by a transfer function if it is basically as i told you transfer function transfer function is nothing but the mathematical model of the system understood that is called as a transfer function so how do you find transfer function by applying impulse to the input isn't it if you apply a impulse input to the system like you do an x-ray to your body you will get the whole body picture isn't it so to get the whole picture of whatever is present inside this block or that particular system we have to apply the input as an impulse and you have to see on the screen that is the output this is called as the impulse response that impulse response itself is called as a transfer function and the transfer function precisely i can tell transfer function is nothing but laplace transform of the impulse response of the system so if you are going to analyze the system by using this transfer function analysis there is one condition to be remembered the system can be described in terms of a transfer function when the system is time invariant system and it is a linear system for linear time invariant system that means the parameters of the system does not change that means this is not a dynamic system this is just a steady state system then only you can analyze the uh, transfer function using transfer function analysis and another thing is the initial conditions must be zero so that is the condition for operating or working with the transfer function analysis so you look at this question a transfer function can be completely described by a transfer function okay system can be described by completely by a transfer function if it is if it is linear and time invariant option d is the right answer for this question so he has given you a open loop transfer function and a closed uh, open loop open loop transfer function and he is asking to find what is the closed loop transfer function of this system see whenever you are having an open loop transfer function open loop transfer function open loop transfer function if you want to open loop transfer function will be of this form you will have a numerator and you will have a denominator okay this is the numerator of open loop this is the denominator of open loop suppose from this open loop transfer function you want to find the closed loop transfer function and assuming that this system is unity feedback system this is only this technique which i am going to tell is valid only for unity feedback system you are adding an open loop transfer function with a feedback path whose gain is 1 for example if the open loop transfer function is something like this g of s with an input and output this is the open loop system to this system i am going to add one unity feedback like this unity feedback means what is the gain of this feedback path it is one only now that is called a unity feedback system so for such a system what will be the closed loop transfer function means numerator of the open loop transfer function is as it is divided by denominator of the open loop transfer function plus numerator of the open loop transfer function if you just do this this is more than enough similarly if you want to you are given with a uh, closed loop transfer function so closed loop transfer function will have a numerator and closed loop transfer function will have a denominator so from this provided it is a unity feedback system you want to find the open loop transfer function if you find the open loop transfer function then it will be equal to closed loop transfer function numerator divided by closed loop transfer function denominator minus closed loop transfer function numerator so this is going to be the open loop transfer function when you want to find from a closed loop transfer function okay and this is only valid for a 
unity feedback system so you just look at this question in this question what has been given he has given the open loop transfer function what is the open loop transfer function given in this question and he says that the k value is equal to 1 so i put k is equal to 1 i want to find the closed loop transfer function so closed loop transfer function means how i can write 1 by the same term that is s into s plus 2 into s square plus 2s plus 2 whole plus 1 isn't it because this point we are this numerator again we are adding in the denominator in this way so this becomes the closed loop transfer function now to this if you solve this then you will get the final answer as 1 by s plus 1 to the power of 4 okay so anyhow now we have started discussing about the transfer functions so let me discuss a little bit about the transfer function analysis so as you know transfer function is nothing but the laplace transform of the impulse response of a system assuming zero initial conditions so keep that thing apart now general form of a transfer function in a control system so general form of a transfer function is equal to the generally transfer function looks like this so this is the generalized form of a transfer function so if you look at this generalized form of a transfer function where k will give you the dc gain of the system dc gain of a system dc gain of system means when you are applying dc input to the system how is it going to behave or what is going to be the output that is only the dc gain of the system so if dc gain is equal to system means what is the system frequency frequency is equal to zero s means what s can be written as g omega no means s is nothing but the frequency so if you want to find the dc gain of a system you have to just put s is equal to zero now the dc gain concept is again very very important for control system competitive exams basically so let me discuss a little bit about this thing so how do you find a dc gain of a system so let us say i am taking an example system now i am supposed to find what is the dc gain of the system so what will be the dc gain of the system just put s is equal to 0 if you put s is equal to 0 s is equal to 0 s is equal to 0 what you will have minus 2 by 2 into 10 isn't it so you will get minus 1 by 10 or minus 0 0.1 is the dc gain of the system okay well and good now i am going to give another system now this is another system so what is the dc gain of the system as i was telling if you want to find the dc gain, you have to put s is equal to 0 so like this if you put s is equal to 0 so the whole denominator will be equal to 0 then dc gain will be equal to infinity so this will become a wrong case so under this condition under this condition what we have to do is now you see are there any poles at origin there is one pole at origin what do you mean by pole pole is nothing but the root of the denominator equation root of the denominator equation that means the value of s where the entire equation may become equal to i mean the whole transfer function or the denominator will be equal to zero means the transfer function gain will be equal to infinity that is only called as a pole so now you see there are three poles over here isn't it where s is equal to zero there can be s is equal to zero or s can be equal to minus two or s can be equal to minus 10 that means there are three poles that means there are three possibilities of s when you put those values in this s this system transfer function will go to infinity is it so there are three poles so there are how many number of poles at zero or origin that is one s is there so that is called as the type of the system type n that is governed by the power of the only s here so where n gives the type of the system okay let us say if it is type 1 of the system it is type 1 system type 1 system means there is only one pole at origin type 2 system there are two poles at origin that means it will be s square understood so depending upon the type of the system you have to multiply that much power of s so this is type 1 system so i will multiply this equation into s directly so s s get cancelled out then i will get 10 by if you put now s is equal to 0 then you get 2 into 10 so 10 10 get cancelled 0.5 is the dc gain of this system okay so this particular uh, formula or this particular technique is called as velocity error coefficient this is called as velocity error coefficient where velocity error coefficient is equal to limit s tends to 0 s into g of s this is called as velocity error coefficient so velocity error coefficient is nothing but the dc gain of a type 1 system whereas the dc gain of this system which we were seeing earlier that was type 0 system for a type 0 system dc gain is equal to positional error coefficient kp okay where kp is simply limit s tends to 0 g of s okay so velocity error coefficient means 
s into g of s like that for a type 2 system if you want to find out the dc gain that will be equal to acceleration error coefficient limit s tends to 0 s square g of s so up to here it is very well defined everywhere now i will give you another question over here tell me what is the dc gain of that particular system so see this system what is the dc gain of this system so the dc gain of system means sir we have studied only up to acceleration error coefficient now here there is type 3 system so what is the error coefficient of a type 3 system see even though there is not defined the dc gain of a n type system okay will be just uh, that limit s tends to 0 s power n into g of s so dc gain of any system okay of any type of system will be given by this formula so simply i have to multiply it with s cube and cancel out this s cube and s cube and put down the values if you put the values what you will get you will get 10 into s into 5 square uh, 5 square means 25 divided by 2 square is 4 plus uh, 10 is multiplied by 10 into 10 so 25 by 4 is the dc gain of this system so like this we have to say so write down this is the dc gain of any system so another thing i want to discuss regarding this uh, transfer function is that order of the transfer function and another thing is type of transfer function type of transfer function is equal to number of poles at origin now i will give you a transfer function tell me what is the order and type of that particular system now what is the type of the system and order of the system so you look at this what is the type of the system so type of the system is number of poles at origin so there are three poles at origin so here type n is equal to 3 and next you want to find the order so order of poles is nothing but how many possible values of s is there to make the denominator is equal to 0 so there are three values here for this particular term s plus 2 whole square it has got two roots or two s values will be there so 3 plus 2 5 so this has got 1 so order will be equal to 6 okay this is third type and uh, type 3 and sixth order system next uh, from this i want to find the value of pole so in here here pole s will be equal to i can suppose say i want to write the poles of this particular generalized form so let us say i want to write the pole so poles are what can be the possible values of pole 1 by 1 minus i mean minus 1 by tau a or it can be minus 1 by tau b so on up to minus 1 by tau m isn't it so these are the values of poles so pole is nothing but what do you see 1 by tau what is this tau tau means time constant time constant time constant is nothing but the time taken for the particular system to respond to a given input if time constant and pole is inversely proportional to time constant means if you know the value of pole then directly if you take the inverse of that particular pole then you will get the time constant isn't it or you can find out what is the uh, time speed of the you can discriminate or you can find out what is the speed of the response 